Item uh, number six. Item number six is a public hearing to consider the uh, Coastal Commission staff's revised recommendations on the Mid Coast Update Local Coastal Program amendments. Good morning, morning, President Church, Honorable Supervisors, Mr. Bosch, Mr. Murphy. I'm Steve Monowitz, Long Range Planning Services Manager for the uh, County's Planning and Building Department. The purpose of today's hearing is to review the California Coastal Commission staff's final recommendation that's been prepared regarding the county's proposed Midcoast LCP update. That's scheduled for Coastal Commission hearing on December 10th in San Francisco. So at this hearing, we'd like to provide the board with an opportunity to review and, if necessary, modify the county's position on the commission staff's recommended changes as outlined in the staff report and as I will discuss today. Um, first, I'd like to give a, some quick background information. Um, the LCP update has been a 10-year effort, including six years at the local level where we conducted many community scoping meetings, we did alternatives, reports and analyses, community workshops. There were 15 planning commission hearings and five supervisor, board of supervisor hearings uh, prior to submittal to the Coastal Commission in early 2007. And since that time we've been working with commission staff to get it to the point get the submittal to the point where they would file it as complete and schedule it for commission hearing. They scheduled it for a commission hearing in March of 2009 and the staff report prepared for that hearing contained many significant changes. Uh, as a result, we requested a continuance of that hearing and scheduled local hearings to review those changes. And those occurred in June and July of this year. And since that time, we've continued to work with commission staff to resolve the uh, outstanding issues. Before I get into those, let's quickly review some of the beneficial changes that are included in the county submittal. First, um, as proposed by the county, the LCP update will lower the maximum amount of development allowed f uh, per year from 125 to 75 units per year. It also will add incentives for substandard lot mergers. An additional benefit is that the update will enhance open space protection and recreation opportunities, among other ways by prohibiting residential development on the Burnham Strip, uh, supporting efforts to add the Devil's Slide bypass lands to our park system, and uh, reducing floor area and height limits in the RM, CZ, and PAD districts. The update, as submitted by the county, also attempts to address housing and infrastructure needs, such as by adding incentives for affordable housing units in existing residential areas, and by including new standards to reduce traffic congestion on Highway 1. Finally, the update proposed by the county improves water quality protection, among other ways, by limiting impervious surfaces and by establishing new winter grading controls. Despite these improvements, there are a number of additional improvements that the Commission staff has proposed. And when we reviewed that with this board in July of 2009, uh, at the staff level, we agreed with about half of those proposed changes. Um, the remaining half, where there were points of disagreement, revol uh, revolved around 19 different issue areas. Since that time, where we stand now is we've resolved um, approximately uh, 12 of those issue areas and there are seven outstanding issue areas. So we're about two-thirds in agreement with the Commission staff's recommendations. But these final seven issue areas we feel are uh, very important for the Board to understand and uh, for the County to respond to the Commission staff. So before I get into the details of those issues, I'd like to offer some observations about the Commission's recommendation in general. Um, unfortunately, the Commission staff report contains no recognition of the beneficial changes to the LCP that I previously described, nor does it uh, recognize the county's successful efforts to protect coastal resources throughout its history of LCP implementation. 
Rather, the Commission staff is asserting that significant growth and development has occurred and that this development has caused adverse effects on public health and safety and coastal resources. These assertions are based primarily about concerns regarding wastewater overflow uh, associated with wet weather infiltration into uh, wastewater collection pipes, traffic on Highway 1 and 92, and um, that's essentially it. Uh, as a result of these concerns, they're proposing some very substantial and significant changes to the LCP, such as a new policy that prohibits any development other than residential and coastal act priority uses until traffic conditions improve. And we'll talk about that in a little more detail in a second. But I wanted to uh, present the county staff's position that uh, from our perspective, growth on the Midcoast has occurred at a red relatively modest rate. And that the update proposed by the county contains many policy improvements that will allow us to address the infrastructure issues that are of concern to the commission staff. But because the commission staff is not satisfied with these concerns and they've proposed these uh, significant additional changes, we're, we remain very concerned about the fact that this has been done largely outside of the local review process. and. Um, really has no connection to the actual impacts of the update. From a coastal resource uh, perspective, it's the, the changes included in the update are either beneficial or neutral with respect to the protection of coastal resources. So there's real no additional impacts to coastal resources posed by the LCP update that warrants the extensive changes proposed by the commission staff. Nevertheless, we've continued to work with the commission staff to reach agreement on as many points as we can. The remaining issues have to do with the type and rate of growth. Um, as I mentioned, the county proposed to go from 125 units per year per se to 75 units per year. Commission staff is suggesting that that be lowered to 40. In the county's submittal, affordable housing units and secondary dwelling units would be exempt from this growth rate limitation. The Commission staff has eliminated that exemption and would count affordable housing units and secondary units um, in this growth rate limit. They have included a provision that allows more than 40 units for affordable units or for secondary dwelling units if in the prior three years on average we've not reach the maximum of 40, we can add those additional units in one year, um, provided that the units are restricted and contracted to be affordable. And perhaps one of the most uh, significant changes that Commission staff is proposing regarding growth is, as I mentioned earlier, limiting development to residential and coastal act priority uses until traffic levels improve. And I need to make a correction about this slide. It says limit development to single family residences. The commission staff has revised that. That was from an earlier version of their recommendation. They are now uh, proposing to allow uh, residential development within the growth rate. Um, and coastal act priority uses. And I, I think that's a good change because we were very concerned that limiting it to single family residences would eliminate the possibility of uh, moving affordable housing projects forward. So uh, that is a good change. But nevertheless, um, it's still a problematic change in that it prohibits neighborhood commercial and other types of development other than residential and coastal act priority uses. And, uh, we're concerned about that for a number of reasons. Um, first, it, it seems that this is being proposed in response to a regional traffic problem. And the, the placing such significant restrictions on the development of a small urban area in response to a regional traffic problem is not a fair or appropriate way to address the circulation need. It appears to depart from the way in which such issues are being addressed elsewhere on the central coast, such as in Santa Cruz and Monterey, which have similar traffic problems, but to my knowledge don't have such restrictions on the development of their urban areas. And perhaps most importantly, it interferes with the implementation of solutions to the problem by uh, reducing opportunities 
to improve the jobs and housing balance on the coast. So in other words, if we only allow residential development and limited coastal act priority uses, the sorts of job creating uh, projects that would help reduce traffic issues will not be feasible. So the recommended county position on this matter is that the commission staff should either delete these modifications or revise them to exempt affordable units and secondary residences from the growth rate limit and also to eliminate the restriction on the type of development allowed until traffic improves. The second unresolved issue has to do with uh, temporary prohibition of private wells. Uh, the Coastal Commission staff proposes to prohibit private wells until such a time that a groundwater management plan is developed and incorporated into the LCP via future LCP amendment. In addition, the Commission staff is uh, proposing a policy that requires existing development that's served by wells to connect to the public water supply system. One of the problems with this second proposal is that it's unclear at what point such a connection would be triggered, whether or not it would uh, be in conjunction with a permit application, for example, for an addition, and at what, um, what extent of development would trigger this requirement to connect to the public system. In response to these proposals by the commission staff, the county is recommending that the commission delete the modification prohibiting private wells. Instead, you will be hearing on the, as an item following this one, a proposal for the county to adopt its own interim urgency ordinance to control wells in areas that we think are problematic. And we think this is a superior approach to the one recommended by the commission staff for a number of reasons. Um, number one, it's focused on the particular groundwater basins where the phase two groundwater report documents a threat to public safety. Second, it prohibits all wells that would exacerbate this risk, not just private wells. So it would also apply to any type of well proposed in these areas, whereas um, the commission staff's proposal is focused only on private wells. Third, the county's recommended approach would apply to what's known as the categorical exclusion area. And this is a majority of the mid-coast urban area is within this categorical exclusion area where single-family residential development is exempt from coastal permit requirements and therefore exempt from complying with LCP requirements. So this would uh, address wells in those areas. Finally, the county proposed approach addresses government code requirements for the adoption of an urgency ordinance. With respect to the requirement to connect to the uh, public water supply system when such connections are available. Uh, we can support such an approach, but we would like the Commission staff to clarify how that would be implemented. The third unresolved issue has to do with uh, the restriction of public works capacities. The Commission staff proposes to re restrict the capacity of public works projects to that which can be supported by existing or reasonable foreseeable, reasonably foreseeable capacity of other infrastructure. And our primary concern about this is that needed roadway enhancements may not be able to move forward due to water supply concerns. And water supply projects may not be able to move forward due to traffic concerns. So by tying these different pieces of infrastructure together, um, we've placed impediments in, on solving the problems that are the very reason for this concern. Um, the recommended county position is that the commission either delete this modification or, or revise it to allow public works projects to be sized to accommodate build out. The next unres unresolved issue has to do with um, prioritizing service capacities. The county in its submittal proposed to set aside water supplies for affordable housing and the commission staff has agreed to keep that 
proposal. Previously, they had recommended deleting it, but they've uh, revised their recommendation in response to our concerns. But nevertheless, they have retained a modification that places local priorities, such as affordable housing, below Coastal Act priorities. So in other words, if, for example, a water supply project was to move forward with limited capacity, it wouldn't be able to support all the water needs of a region. Under the Coastal Commission's modification, that water would need to go to Coastal Act priorities first. And the county staff would like to see there be a better, a better balanced approach. So if a public works project moves forward with limited capacity, some of that capacity is set aside for Coastal Act priority uses, but also some is set aside for local priorities, such as affordable housing. So uh, we would suggest that the Commission staff delete the modification. Another unresolved issue has to do with uh, a new policy that requires subdivisions to retire existing vacant lots with equivalent development potential. So in other words, if a subdivision proposal uh, created 10 new lots out of one, the applicant in that case would need to find 10 developable lots within the mid-coast urban area, purchase those lots, and restrict them for open space. Um, and we have a few concerns about this. First of all, from a long-range planning perspective, I think it's important to keep in mind that the urban mid-coast is designated essentially as an infill area, where, which enables the county to maximize protection of coastal resources outside of the urban area. And by requiring infill lots to be purchased and set aside for open space, we diminish our ability to centralize development, and we also wind up with a patchwork pattern of vacant lots within, within an urban area that can become problematic, both in terms of weeds and trash dumping and long-term management. So uh, we don't agree with the approach as it's uh, been written up by the commission staff. Um, that being said, if they if the Commission staff feels it's an essential component of their recommendation, I think we might be able to reach agreement if it's clarified so it's limited in its application. We're particularly concerned about applying this to conditional certificates of compliance. Uh, this board has heard about the implications of the Witt and the Abernathy decision, and there may be uh, property owners who need to go through the conditional certificate of compliance process to legalize their existing holdings. And uh, the concern is that those property owners will, in addition to having to obtain a type B COC, will also need to pursue these lot retirements. And uh, we don't feel that that is appropriate. Another unresolved issue has to do with the uh, rezoning of the bypass lands. The county is clear in its submittal to the Coastal Commission that we support efforts to adding the bypass, Devil Slide bypass lands to the regional park system. Um, the Commission staff is asking that the county take it one step further and actually redesignate and rezone this entire area as community open space and conservation. And while we're supportive of the concept of maximizing open space and recreation opportunities there, it's premature to move forward with a rezoning prior to the development of a plan for those trails and open space areas. Um, th that plan will address, um, uh, that plan is needed to ensure that state and local interests in the future of this land are appropriately Addressed. This includes protecting rights of access to private property owners, addressing Caltrans needs for maintenance and equipment staging areas, and determining which of the areas of the bypass alignment truly are suitable for park and recreation uses. So we would advocate deletion of that modification and that rezoning take place after we complete the plan for the trail and park in that area. 
The final unresolved issue has to do with what we term grandfathering, and it has, uh, has to do with applying these amendments to applications that are currently in progress. The county proposed to um, exempt applications currently in progress from the changes included in the amendment. The commission staff has just recently suggested that those grandfathering provisions be deleted. So this is a new issue that was not before the board in June or July and that has recently surfaced. Um, county staff is recommending that that modification be deleted. We feel that it's um, not consistent with the county's past practice with respect to um, updating its planning documents and we're also concerned that some of the policy changes recommended by commission staff could, will interfere with projects currently underway that will be beneficial for the region. Okay, so on December 10th, in addition to the Midcoast LCP update, there will be two other items on their agenda. One is a review of the telecommunication ordinance that the county uh, recently adopted, as, and they will also be considering the county proposed update to the Midcoast Design Guidelines Standards. I'm happy to report that on these items, we appear to be uh, in general agreement with the Commission staff's recommendation. There is one outstanding issue regarding the design guidelines that we're trying to resolve. It has to do with a requirement that all landscaping be drought tolerant. And we're concerned about how that might impact a property owner's ability to plant a rose garden or vegetable garden. So we're working with Commission staff to resolve that issue. But we, look to be, uh, we seem to be in agreement on the remainder of their modifications. Here's the time and location of the Coastal Commission hearing. The Commission staff report is available on its website. Uh, uh, the Planning Department will also place a link to the Commission staff report on our website. And um, before I conclude my presentation, I'd like to uh, recognize that three letters have recently been received. Uh, we received letters from the San Mateo County Association of Realtors, who writes in support of the county staff's proposed position on the commission staff's amendment, with one exception. They are in opposition to the interim well ordinance amendment that you'll be considering in the next item. We also received a letter from Terrence Gossett, California Property Rights Association, and um, he takes a similar position to that of the San Mateo County Association of Realtors. And finally, we received a letter from the Granada Sanitary District yesterday supporting the Commission staff's recommended modifications. In addition, we've had recent communications with Caltrans staff and understand that they remain um, concerned about the language recommended by the Commission staff both regarding the bypass lands as well as regarding coastal trail improvements along Highway 1. So in terms of uh, next steps, excuse me, um, staff is recommending that following today's hearing that the Board of Supervisors vote to adopt the county's position on the Commission staff's recommendation as presented to you today with any changes that you feel are necessary. After the board's vote, uh, planning staff will be coordinating with Supervisor Gordon's office to uh, develop our presentation to the Coastal Commission on December 10th. And then after the Coastal Commission hearing on December 10th, any changes that are adopted by the State Coastal Commission will need to come back to this board for your review and consideration. At that time, you will have the choice to either accept the modifications adopted by the Commission staff, which would make the amendment effective as modified by the Commission, or you can decline to accept those modifications, which would keep the current LCP intact. Um, there is a third option, which would be to decline to accept the modifications and then resubmit a, a new version 
of the update to the commission staff. And um, planning staff is not generally supportive of that approach because it's almost like going back to square one. And we've invested a lot of time and resources to get to this point. We've got a lot of other important projects that we're trying to move forward. And we hope that we can resolve this project in the near future. So that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. OK, thank you, Mr. Monowitz. <clears throat> Are there any questions for staff? OK, we have a number of uh, uh, speakers. So I'm going to thank you, Mr. Monowitz. I'm going to ask that uh, uh, you limit uh, uh, your comments to two minutes each. And the first speaker is uh, Lisa Ketchum, followed by Jack Olson. Good morning. I'm Lisa Ketchum. I uh, live in Moss Beach. I support the Coastal Commission staff recommendations and also the comment letter from Committee for Green Foothills. I'd like to read a few excerpts from a letter you have from Area 29, which was, refers to Critical Coastal Area 29. Montero Moss Beach Well Environmental Impact Report prepared in 1989 by Kleinfelder states about the Upper Seal Cove subunit. This subunit of the Terrace Aquifer is located on a coastal bluff west of the airport, south of San Vicente Creek, and is isolated from other hydrologic subunits. Estimated inflows to the Terrace Aquifer in this subunit are limited largely to precipitation. The report concludes the Montero Heights, Upper Moss Beach, and Upper Seal Cove hydrologic subunits are areas where difficult well drilling, low yields, and low reliability of yields can be expected. <clears throat> Since this 1989 report, 946 wells have been drilled in the urban mid-coast. Please include the Upper Seal Cove in the prohibition of new drinking water wells in the urban mid-coast. And uh, I, just, I just don't see how we can continue to draw ever more water from the ground and add ever more cars to our clogged roads as if there were no tomorrow. As a Mid-Coast resident, I live only 22 miles from here, but in order to ensure arriving on time at a 9 a.m. Redwood City hearing, I have to leave home before 7.15. After that, school and commuter traffic bring Highway 1 to a crawl. For the same reason, on weekends, I stay home. I feel sorry for the coastal visitors sitting in their cars long hours for a chance to enjoy the coast. As stewards of this special area that the Coastal Act meant to preserve for all Californians, I think we need to do a better job. My sincere thanks to everyone who's worked so hard on this. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Next speaker is Jack Olson, followed by Paul Perkovic. Good morning, President Church. Good morning, Jack. Honorable board members, County Manager Bosch, and Council Michael Murphy. Just a few quick points. First, on coastal trail planning, Farm Bureau would like to request that any effort and any action undertaken by the county includes agricultural elements at the table to ensure that we can come up with valid use agreements for trails so that the use of trails do not impact both existing or potential agricultural operations. Um, I, I firmly believe with a lot of good planning, we can prevent conflict and have ways that agriculture and trails can coexist together. Um, secondly, on the Burnham Strip area, we're happy to see that the use of potential temporary stands would be allowed in that area, and would like to point out that um, County Council and the Coastal Commission staff missed a couple of elements that should be included in that discussion. In both the Food and Ag Code and the Business and Professions Code, there are direct use activities and requirements for uh, direct marketing opportunities, and that if this affords agriculture the opportunity to sell their product at or near place of production. And is, this is codified in both those elements of state law, so a farmer may actually go out and be able to sell his product either on his farm or the state has defined at or near place of production as the first public roadway where local government and others do have authority is determining types of structures. But basically what this does allow for is a farmer to put product in the back of his pickup truck and park it right off the roadway on his property and be able to sell that. And we'd like to be sure that that's included in this discussion as well so that we don't end up with diverging elements of, of code not being realized. And the third element that we're concerned with is the provision of new wells. Um, agriculture lives and dies by water, 
and we do have elements of vibrant, healthy agriculture within that mid-coast region, both in the urban and the rural areas, and we would like to see a preclusion or a protection for agricultural wells as they are currently categorically exempt from requirements, and we'd like to have that there, especially if we're continuing in a drought. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Paul Perkovic, followed by Ch Charles Lester. Uh, good morning, President Church and members of the board. I'm Paul Perkovic. I'm president of the board of the Montero Water and Sanitary District, and our district serves a significant portion of the Midcoast area under concern. Uh, uh, most of you uh, are relatively new to the Board of Supervisors and were not here in 1989 when the board adopted resolution number 53059. And that resolution uh, resolved that the Board of Supervisors reaffirms its existing policy of allowing the use of water wells in urban areas only when no other water is available from existing public water systems and directs the planning director and environmental health director to implement this policy in the coastal zone by conditioning all appropriate permits in the urban mid-coast side area to require connection to a public water system when such water supplies are available. There's nothing in there that says it's triggered only when people remodel or any other condition. It's a very direct, uh, clear statement of the board's policy. Um, I would like to refer also to the, con by the way, Steve Monowitz made an excellent presentation, a good summary of the issues. Um, he did comment on the concern of coastal act priorities versus county priorities, and that's not a new issue at all. Citizens Utilities Company used to run the water system in our area, and when they applied for a new water well located at the Half Moon Bay Airport in the late 1980s, about the same time your board adopted this resolution, the Coastal Commission staff made it very clear, and the Coastal Commission approved a coastal development permit with conditions that explicitly said new water supplies were reserved first for Coastal Act priorities, and after that, for county priorities, and only after all of those were satisfied for non-priority uses. So this is not at all a new concept coming from the Coastal Commission. It's been there all along. Uh, I have many other comments that will be submitted in writing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Paul. Next speaker is Charles uh, Lester, followed by Fran Pollard. Hi. Good morning, Honorable Good morning. Board. Uh, Charles Lester, California Coastal Commission. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I am here essentially ask question, uh, answer questions, but also uh, I'd like to make a couple observations. One is uh, we have done our best over the last several years to work closely with your staff, and we appreciate that opportunity. Uh, we've made a lot of progress, particularly in the last six months, on reaching agreement on various uh, proposed changes. Uh, but we've also, as I mentioned uh, the last time I spoke to you, um, made an effort to work at the local level and with the planning commission process and we submitted a number of letters along the way raising various uh, questions and concerns that we had. Uh, many of our recommendations track recommendations of your own planning commission that were made uh, to you previously, uh, including the recommendation on the growth rate, which was uh, a 1 percent or 40 units per year. Uh, one observation I wanted to make on uh, the question of affordable housing is um, we're we support affordable housing and our intention in the growth management uh, recommendation is not to preclude affordable housing. Uh, one slight correction in the uh, current proposed modification, uh, the intention would be to allow affordable housing to move forward in the three years into the future, not based on the prior three years. So um, recognizing that there's a, uh, we believe, a strong need to manage growth at a slow rate we also recognize that an affordable housing project may come forward late in the year that would not fit within the uh, absolute number for that year. We believe you should be able to move forward with that as long as the rate over the, the total three years into the future does not exceed the 1%. So um, we're, as far as we're concerned, all of those units could be affordable. The, the issue is at what rate are we growing and how are we managing the impacts of that growth, particularly traffic. And as you've heard, uh, everyone recognizes that there's a significant traffic issue. Uh, we're doing our best to balance the different issues of the rate of growth, how you mitigate for traffic, what kinds of projects come online at what time. And uh, we're continuing to work with your staff. We hope to be able to make more progress on that in the next week, uh, if not after the commission takes an action, hopefully next week. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lester. 
Next speaker is uh, Fran uh, Pollard, followed by uh, Leonard Warren. Good morning. Good morning, Board of Supervisors, Honorable Board. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet. I continue to support the Coastal Commission staff's um, recommendations and the Granada Sanitary District recommendations. And also, since Burnham Strip was brought up, my pet project, uh, I hope that will con uh, be a community park for everyone to enjoy, not for a few. Thank you. Thank you. Leonard Warren, followed by Sabrina Brennan. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning. Honorable Supervisors. Um, I'll start out by saying I support the uh, Coastal Commission staff's uh, recommendations and um, the uh, CGF letter. Um, I, I still need to reiterate a comment made by one of your best planning commissioners at an LCP update hearing on the coast side uh, probably about four years ago regarding the growth rate. He said, we're headed toward a train wreck and I see no reason to speed towards it. Um, the, the growth rate should be the historical average of 40 units a year. Uh, I, I definitely support doing it on number of units per year instead of um, on a percentage basis because of the administration difficulties in dealing with the percentages. Um, the, res the, the, the limits, uh, the 40 units a year should include uh, all residential, caretaker, affordable, just give priority to the things that you want to make sure get done and as Charles Lester just suggested uh, let the bigger projects borrow from future years as necessary but they should not be exempted from counting because they still have pretty much all the same impacts on the infrastructure. Um, grandfathering. There are county permits for projects on the coast side that have been in planning for 10 years some of them with no progress whatsoever in the last eight years or six years or whatever. You need to cancel the permits that are not ever going to be approved. Um, and on, on wells, uh, I'll, I'll probably have to cover more of this on your next agenda item, but uh, until you have a study that demonstrates that the, the, the uh, aquifer has enough water to support all of the connections in dry years, it is folly to continue to add more straws into that uh, source. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Sabrina Brennan followed by Jan Gray. Hello, I'm Sabrina Brennan and um, I support all of the Coastal Commission's um, staff recommendations. Um, Mid Coast Community Council members do not find a compelling basis for raising the growth rate beyond the Coastal Commission's proposed 40 unit limits. We support the Coastal Commission's staff recommendation for a temporary moratorium on private wells in the urban area extending from Miramar through Montera. The Mid Coast Groundwater Study Phase 2 shows that all of our aquifers are at risk from saltwater intrusion and overdraft from the 946 wells that have been drilled since 1989. Public works capacities. We disagree with the county staff's assertions that the need to ensure that public works projects do not generate growth that will result in significant adverse impacts or the conflicts with the county's land use plans can be effectively addressed through the environmental review and permitting process. Prioritizing service capacities for affordable housing. The Coastal Commission changes are both necessary and appropriate, especially in light of increasing traffic congestion. In short, the Coastal Commission's proposed changes here are well placed and should be and should not be revisited. Lot retirement. We oppose county staff's assertion that, co that Coastal Commission staff revise the lot retirement requirements so that it will only apply to land divisions that create five or more new parcels. Here again, county staff is engineering an unnecessary and unwise way to increase development and the resulting traffic problems. When both the LCP and its own policies specifically discourage subdivisions, not allowing further subdivision of lots deemed to have 
deemed to not have been subdivided according to Abernathy and Witt will reduce the need to expand urban infrastructure services. The lot retirement policy would be best served by rejecting the county staff proposed loopholes. I have a lot of other comments that will be um, delivered in a letter to the Board of Supervisors from the Midcoast Community Council. Thank you for okay. your time. Thank you very much. Jan Gray followed by David Byers. Sir, I would like to speak on the next item, not this one. Okay. Thank you. Then uh, David Byers, followed by Scott Holmes. Hi, good morning, members of the board. Dave Byers on behalf of Big Wave. I sat in this room two weeks ago, and this room was full to capacity. And it was reported in the San Mateo Times regarding the meeting that we had before the Planning Commission on Big Wave. Let me just read a paragraph. Planning commissioners sat and listened for several hours Wednesday as more than 100 residents spoke passionately on behalf of the Big Wave project and a few against it, while dozens of others packed the hearing room past capacity in support. Now, what do you do when you have a project that's going to build developmental housing for developmentally delayed adults that has a lot of public support? What do you do? Well, you try to construct a regulatory labyrinth to stop it. And that's what the Coastal Commission staff is doing. I've got the records in my files about the letters they have written for the past four years against this project. But I don't have to put those in front of you today. Let's just look at your staff report, the executive summary, the points of disagreement between your staff and the Coastal Commission. Reduction in the county's proposed 75 residential units? Well, that will hurt big wave because you're building a housing project for 50 people. So if you have it only 40 units, you can't build it for those other 10 people. Prohibition of private wells, we're using a well we already have that's already permitted by the county. That's against big wave. Deletion of a requirement to reserve additional water supplies for affordable housing. The county's got three affordable housing sites out on the coast side for the last, well, 1982. That's 27 years. There hasn't been one of them built. What is the big concern about having some priorities for affordable housing? Lot retirement? I don't know who dreamed that one up. That's, that's unbelievable. Grandfathering. We've been in the county planning process for four years. We've spent $400,000 on an environmental impact report. And now the Coastal Commission staff wants to change the rules after we've been processing this project. I've got a very simple way for you to quit wasting your valuable staff time on these LCP amendments. You had 15 Planning Commission hearings, you had five Board of Supervisors hearings, and the Coastal Commission staff says they don't like what democracy produced. Just tell them to stick it. They approve the county amendments or there are no amendments. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Scott uh, Holmes followed by uh, Lenny Roberts. Um, good afternoon, or good morning. We're not afternoon yet. Morning. I, I'm Scott Holmes, and I'm, I'm the project engineer for the Big Wave Project. And a couple of things that I really appreciated the county's um, perspective on was um, you don't want to create legislation that limits your ability to resolve issues. And one of the um, concerns I had with the growth rate, when you limit um, job generating um, development, you also limit the, um, or you basically continue the increase of commuting, which is basically the biggest problem we have with traffic. So I think um, anything that does commercial or light industrial that allows jobs to be created shouldn't be um, in that growth limit. In the same sense, um, you, you want to be able to evaluate projects based on their impacts, not based on their um, compliance with regulations. We're, we're proposing a um, residential, very low income housing project where people don't drive, so its impact is um, pretty limited to on, the, on, on traffic. Also, we, um, the um, limitations on wells needs to be looked at independently. The, um, the air airport aquifer is a very rich aquifer. It's open-ended on one end, 500 acre feet on an average flow into the ocean, and that's an average which um, exceeds drought years and everything else. And to consider that as a limited resource when it's an ideal place to um, limit imports and limit exports. The Coastal Act uh, encourages recycling 
and discourages the overflow and discharge of sewage into the marine environment. The, the Coastal Act also does encourage commercial and job producing um, projects within residential areas because it does reduce traffic. So I, I appreciate the county's direction to um, not kill projects that can be evaluated based on their positive and lack of negative impacts. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is uh, Lenny Roberts, followed by Catherine Slater Carter. Good morning, Mr. Good President, morning. members of the board. I'm Lenny Roberts. I'm speaking for Committee for Green Foothills. Um, we have written a letter to the board, which I think you have received. Uh, we support the County Planning Commission and the Coast Commission recommendations for an annual growth limit of 40 residential units per year. Um, we note that over the past five years, an average of 38 residential units have been approved annually, and the county planning staff concedes that the limit of 40 residential units should not have a significant impact on the current rate of development. Uh, we don't uh, support including um, or e exempting Princeton caretaker units or second units from the growth rate lim uh, growth growth rate. Uh, regarding private wells. We strongly support the prohibition of new private drinking water wells in the urban mid-coast area. Allowing private individual drinking water wells within the boundaries of the public water agencies, um, it um, negatively affects the economic viability of the public agencies and places an undue economic burden on the customers that are um, paying the rates. Moreover, locating individual wells in an urban area in close proximity to sewer lines and old septic tanks increases the potential for contamination of these wells. The mid-coast areas, as you've already heard and we know from the Kleinfelter study, um, the groundwater basins have very limited water and already some wells have failed and in drought cycles we can expect many more. Um, my final area I just wanted to highlight for you this morning is that the rezoning of the former Caltrans right-of-way for the bypass as linear park and trail is an important step to ensure that these lands will become a trail and park system that will provide public access and alternative transportation. Um, we don't, we don't, we do support that rezoning at this time, and we think that the issues of um, access to private property across it or staging that Caltrans has raised as can be addressed. Uh, it doesn't, the rezoning doesn't preclude that. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine Slater Carter, followed by Joe Guntran. Good morning, members of the board. I think I've been at all the meetings for the last 10 years. I do want to say I support wholeheartedly the Coastal Commission staff recommendations, and I really appreciate how the uh, Board of Supervisors has been willing to work with the Coastal Commission. I have a few brief comments. One, in having looked at most of the permits for new residential construction on the coast, uh, most of them have included in the past a condition to connect to public water supplies. So the developers of those lots did agree um, Substandard lots under Witt and Abernathy, uh, the, the incentives to merge substandard lots are not as important, and so it's important to look at balancing the isolated substandard lots that can be developed with parcels that are subject to subdivision under Witt and Abernathy to keep the uh, build-out numbers within bounds. Traffic. The county has not even begun the traffic plan as requested by the community through the Midcoast Community Council 10 or 12 years ago when the Coronado light went in. In fact, the Coronado Light is the major traffic jam on the coast at peak traffic hours during the day and on weekends. It prevents people from Montero and Moss Beach from getting to Half Moon Bay, much less for visitors coming from the north to be able to get to Half Moon Bay. As far as affordable housing goes, there has not been an inventory in spite of many requests for second units. Um, and they are acknowledged as part of the affordable housing stock. There are 227 Pillar Ridge homes that also should be included, thanks to the uh, efforts of Supervisor Gordon and the Board of Supervisors, in the affordable housing stock. And these should be subtracted from the priority set-asides for affordable housing. Those do exist, and they are affordable. They are not yet acknowledged as such. In terms of parks, the vacant lots can become playlands and neighborhood parks. It was the residents of Montero and Moss Beach who turned an abandoned lot into a neighborhood park through our own efforts and funding, as can the Caltrans right-of-way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joe Guntran, followed by Terry Gossett. 
Good morning, Board of Supervisors. I'm Joe Guntran. I live in Montana uh, for the last 30 years, and um, I still hope that your minds aren't made up with regards to the water wells and permits. In 1984, this issue of water wells came up in a moratorium, came up, and a small group of landowners fought the Coastal Commission, and we prevailed. Now, 25 years later, we figured that the water municipalities would have gotten it together and would have been available to provide the vacant landowners in, in, on the coast with water, but they haven't, or maybe they tried and they were stopped. We have one of the strictest well ordinances in the nation, and safeguards are already built in. Uh, the coast is 60% built out, and the, with the remaining 40% 40, 40 of landowners, many of us are still waiting decades to get water service. With regards to limiting the building permits to 75, I favor this. This was discussed in early 2000 and during the design review committee days uh, headed by Supervisor Gordon. And one thing I just want to mention is, you know, our country is out, is still crawling out of an economic depression. People need work. The county needs tax dollars. Growth and in infrastructure safeguards are built in. I mean, why restrict us any longer? Why do the landowners and construction industry keep getting penalized? That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Terry Gassett, followed by Ann Carey. Hello, Honorable Supervisors and staff. My name is Terry Gossett, representing the Californians for Property Rights. It's an educational, nonprofit California corporation manned by all volunteers, totally. I wanted to thank you and your staff for an excellent job for the last 10 years, capturing all of our notions of what our own local coastal program should be. Uh, Mr. Monowitz identified seven issues that are still unresolved with the Coastal Commission. As he stated, the Californians for Property Rights totally support your staff on six of those seven. We do not on the private wells. CPR is concerned that any restriction or prohibition of private wells will harm private property rights and that if the interim urgency ordinance is enacted and extended, it will impact agricultural operations. Furthermore, accommodating the Coastal Commission's desire to prohibit private wells will diminish your own role in local government. Uh, in August the 12th at the workshop that Supervisor Gordon attended with the Coastal Commission, the California Farm Bureau Confederation Federation presented a letter and uh, it was concerned with the inroads on local government control. In addition, they urged the, Coastal, the Farm Bureau urged the Coastal Commission to cease recommending counties adopt practices and policies not required by the Coastal Act. And I think that's what we're seeing with some of the discussion here. I had some other comments about the Kleinfelder report, but I'll hold those for the next agenda meeting. So thanks for your consideration. Thank you. And Carrie, followed by Tim Fromm. Good morning, Good President morning. Church and Honorable Board. My name is Ann Carey, and I'm very concerned about the Coastal Commission staff's proposed lot retirement policy. According to the policy, for example, if a landowner needs to legalize a parcel or desires to divide a parcel into two standard parcels that are compliant with the zoning for the area, that landowner is required to purchase a parcel and deed it to open space. Uh, this is an unfair policy, especially to the small builders. And one can consider this policy an unfair taking of property without compensation. I respectfully request that the board support county staff's position in the staff report that exemptions to the policy be allowed for minor subdivisions and for subdivisions <coughs> that legalize existing holdings of land. And last, I'd like to thank the county for all of its work on this process. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Fron, followed by Paul McGregor. Well, good morning. Good morning. My name is Tim from San Mateo County Farm Bureau. Back in uh, July 7th, San Mateo <coughs> County uh, Farm Bureau brought to your attention our concerns regarding recommendations which would have made it more difficult to establish special districts in the mid coast. This was modification number 12. Our concerns were that this modification would diminish the farming community's efforts to develop more reliable irrigation water sources through potential irrigation districts, especially with regard to the delivery of recycled water to growers. We argued that the flexibility provided by special districts, such as irrigation districts or utility districts, 
could foreseeably provide the platform for efforts to conserve water, to protect valuable natural resources, and to become the foundation for truly sustainable communities, not just in the mid-coast, but the entire coast. We appreciate that the board listened to our presentation. And we support the county staff's current recommendation to delete modification number 12 and to rather rely on current LCP policy 2.15 and language of the Coastal Act. Thank you very much for being so responsive. And thank you. Paul McGregor, followed by Carrie Burke. Good morning, Honorable Board. Paul McGregor, Montero resident for about 30 years. Um, I'm in disagreement with the Coast Commission recommendations. We spent years to come to an agreement on growth and all the other issues, only to have it changed at the end of the LCP update. The Coastal Commission should have been present during these deliberations and not at the end. My question is, who's running this show, the county or the Coastal Commission? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Carrie Burke, followed by Laszlo Vespremi. Good morning, President Good morning. George, honorable members of the board, Carrie Burke. I urge you to reject the Coastal Commission modifications. The proposed modifications are unvetted and have the real potential for unforeseen consequences, including adverse fiscal impacts to the county and to vacant landowners, adverse impacts to local businesses, future legal problems for the county, and loss of local land use control. In reviewing the proposed unresolved issues, it seems apparent that the major burden of the Coastal Commission modifications falls on the vacant landowners. I realize that the board may wish to rescue all the work and the expense of the Mid-Coast Update Program, but at what true cost? Has a fiscal analysis been performed to determine the long-term impacts of these Coastal Commission modifications? For example, the Lot Retirement Program makes no sense to me. All subdivisions must be consistent with zoning and general plan regulations. They also must provide traffic mitigation fees park and loo fees, dedication of streets, on and on. This, these are all meant to reduce impacts. After years of community meetings and hearings at the San Mateo County, it appears our fate will be decided at one public hearing at the Coastal Commission. The Coastside Community relies on you and our staff to represent us at those hearings. Please convey a balanced approach that we all worked on and decided on. And thank you to, to you and to our staff for working so hard. Okay, thank you. Uh, Laszlo Vespremi. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Laszlo Vespremi, Mass Beach resident for 25 years. I speak on support of the Coastal Commission's proposals. As the Board of Supervisors, you are charged to legislate development in San Mateo County. However, you are also custodians of the San Mateo Coast, which makes you the stewards of a resource that belongs not only to the people of San Mateo County, but also to a wider circle of population, the people of California. 12 million people in the Bay Area alone counting on your preserve, the coast, for their beach visits, coastal beauty, and more. I find fault with the county's current grandfather provision as it relates to the Big Wave project. Uh, the country should not be allowed to give a bank, blank check uh, for uh, future developments up to 15 years under a grandfather clause of existence today. This would be inherently unfair as it would place developments completed many years ahead of big wave, for example, under more stringent requirements than the major development that will not be completed for many years to follow. Um, to say that this are actually going to eliminate, big wave eliminate uh, traffic congestion is very ingenious. Uh, it will actually produce 3,000 additional trips a day to make um, our situation uh, much worse. So, uh, in conclusion, the grandfather provision should be found inapplicable and patently unfair, and the county to heed the Coastal Commission's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that uh, completes uh, all the uh, speaker slips. Um, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Public hearing is closed, and uh, the matter is now brought back to the board. Comments? If I might. Um, Supervisor Gordon? Yeah, let me, let me start uh, our discussion. Uh, the, uh, first of all, I, I want to um, 
Thank uh, Charles Lester, the staff of the Coastal Commission, um, and our county planning staff for the work that they have done uh, over the last several months. Um, the, um, uh, the fact that we uh, started off at a place uh, uh, last March with um, some 19 areas of disagreement uh, between what the county had proposed and uh, what the Coastal Commission staff was recommending and are down to, to seven, um, I think is um, substantial progress and, um, um, and I'm very pleased to see that. Um, I understand that, that, you know, we still have seven areas of disagreement. Um, and um, it, um, it seems to me that um, uh, we as, as a board and as a county um, uh, went through um, an extensive process to uh, to get to this place and to um, uh, identify the uh, the proposal that we put forward, um, which uh, uh, certainly at the time uh, comments and expression of the board was that this was a balanced approach, that um, you know we were were weighing a, a variety of um, of conflicting interests. Uh, and um, and attempting uh, to balance those interests in a way uh, that held true to the Coastal Act, um, the uh, um, I think that clearly uh, the proposal that we have made uh, is one that we believe reflects our local interests. Um, the uh, I understand and, and accept that the responsibility um, of the Coastal Commission um, and therefore its staff is to look at, um, um, at matters uh, from a, um, a more broad perspective as it relates uh, to the entire coast of California. Um, and so, um, you know, I know from talking with our counterparts in other coastal counties um, that um, there are these uh, uh, continuing areas of conflict between uh, local uh, proposals um, and, um, uh, and what the Coastal Commission staff recommends. Um, I believe that um, um, we should uh, direct uh, our staff to, um, uh, to continue uh, in the couple of days left um, to talk with Commission staff um, see if there's any other areas of agreement. Uh, and if not, uh, that we should allow the proposal that was worked on here for such a long time uh, to be presented to the Commission um, and let there be uh, the public debate and comment and discussion there, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the rightful place and the rightful next step uh, for that discussion uh, to encourage the Commission um, to uh, uh, give uh, full and due consideration uh, to the uh, the public process, uh, both uh, here in the county that, that we have gone through, uh, but also the public process that they will engage in uh, a week from <laughs> Thursday uh, on this matter. Um, I, I note that um, you know if um, um, if these seven unresolved areas um, were to uh, uh, be approved by the commission um, in its uh, um, in in adopting a staff report that um, there would continue to be a, a level of disagreement between what the county had recommended and what the commission approved. Um, that has to come back then to us um, uh, for uh, consideration, and we would have to then decide whether or not we would accept the changes that uh, the commission had made. Um, and I think that um, uh, that is, again, in terms of the process, an appropriate time for us to, to make those considerations. So um, uh, I, I think that we should continue forward with the, the course uh, and um, commend our staff and the Coastal Commission staff for the progress that's been made. Okay, thank you. Uh, Supervisor Gordon. Was that a motion? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other comments on this? I support the uh, suggestions and recommendations of uh, mm -hmm. Supervisor Gordon because we are going it to, it's going to ultimately come back anyway. So I think it uh, behooves us to, to actually uh, support what we've already um, put forth as recommendations. 
Okay, and Rich, well said. Thank you, and I, I will, uh, on behalf of the board, uh, commend uh, staff for doing an outstanding job. I know you put in countless hours, and you have reached out to the uh, Coast, Coastal Commission staff to try to resolve these issues, and we appreciate that effort. And Mr. Lester, uh, I, I too want to commend you and your staff, and we appreciate the, uh, the uh, extraordinary effort you have made to try to um, balance and, and uh, uh, reach uh, some type of resolution. I know it's not easy, um, as Rich pointed out so well. There, there, there are different interests and different priorities, and uh, somehow um, we, we hope that we can um, uh, come to a resolution on those remaining unresolved uh, issues. So um, I would uh, support uh, that direction uh, that Supervisor Gordon has uh, indicated. So with that, um, are there but, any other comments? I, I, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to... Supervisor Tissier? I just wanted to follow up on, on sort of what Rich was saying, and I really do believe with all the hearings that we've had, we really were looking for a balanced approach. You know, there's a lot of interest out there of people wanting to do things on the coast, but we've always made it difficult, which we want to keep it really balanced and keep, mm -hmm. keep the growth within reason. And I think this approach really solves it from my perspective and I think there may be a few things that our staff can continue to work out with the Coastal Commission but I really do believe we're trying to be true to the Coastal Act and reflect as many interests as we can without going uh, overboard with um, too many regulations that make it difficult to move projects forward um, and so I would like to um, make a motion to uh, accept the staff's recommendations and move this forward to the Coastal Commission. Second. Okay we have a Motion and a second, and um, let's do a, a roll call on this. Supervisor Jacobs Gibson? Aye. Supervisor Tissier? Aye. President Church? Aye. Supervisor Groom? Aye. Supervisor Gordon? Aye. Okay, and uh, the staff's recommendations and are accepted, and um, thank you, uh, everyone, for being here to express your uh, concerns on this matter. We appreciate you taking the, taking the time.